हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नमस्ते सो इन दिस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सिनॉप्सिस ऑफ करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी चैप्टर सो दैट इज अबाउट वीट स्टोन नेटवर्क एंड इंपॉर्टेंट मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ओके सो फर्स्ट वॉट यू मीन बाई इन वीट स्टोन ब्रिज और वीट स्टोन नेटवर्क वीट स्टोन ब्रिज इज ए नेटवर्क और इट इज अ ब्रिज विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ फोर रिसिस्टर्स एंड द फोर रिसिस्टर्स आर कनेक्टेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्वारेटर सो वीट स्टोन ब्रिज इज एन ब्रिज आर ए नेटवर्क which consists of four resistors which are connected in the form of electric uh, in the form of quadrilateral what is the purpose of using wheatstone bridge so by using this bridge or network you can find out the unknown resistance so out of four resistors if the values of three resistors are known then you can calculate the fourth unknown resistance and also it is possible to find the ratio of unknown resistance so here there are four resistors P, Q, R, as well as yes. Okay. So out of these four resistors, if the values of three resistors are known, you can find out the value of fourth unknown resistance. Okay. And also, if the ratio of two resistance is known, then you can find out the ratio of unknown resistance also. So four resistors P, Q, R, S are connected in the form of quadrilateral A, B, C, D. They are connected across. between the two points a and c a battery is connected a battery of emfe is connected along with an external resistance as well as a key so in between the two points b and d a galvanometer is connected so if all the four resistors are suitably adjusted then the potential at the point b is equal to the potential at the point d potential at the point b is equal to potential at the point d which means the two points are at the same potential means there is no current flowing through this particular path if no current flows through this particular path then obviously galvanometer shows zero deflection that means no current flows through the galvanometer or the galvanometer shows zero deflection galvanometer shows zero deflection which implies galvanometer shows zero deflection means no current flows through the galvanometer so this is the balancing condition of what wheatstone network when when no current flows through the galvanometer or the galvanometer deflection becomes zero means that is the balancing condition of wheatstone network so what about the after applying kcl as well as kvl you can obtain the balancing condition the balancing condition of this wheatstone network is given by p by q is equal to r by s so the ratio of resistance in this arm is equal to the ratio of resistance in this particular arm that is p by q is equal to r by s so for example here so out of these four resistors p q r s so if the value of s is unknown if the value of s is unknown then you can calculate the value just by cross multiplying uh, multiplying that is s is equal to r into q divided by p otherwise if the ratio of a resistance p by q is known then you can calculate the ratio of unknown resistance r by s so those two are the applications of what or advantages of using wheatstone network so wheatstone network is an uh, uh, network which consists of four resistors p q r s p q s r and they are connected in the form of quadrilateral between the two points b and d a galvanometer is connected and between the two points a and c a battery of emfe along with a k is connected okay so if all the four resistors are suitably adjusted then at one particular point the potential at the point b is equal to the potential at the point d which means these two point, uh, points are at the same potential means no current flows through this particular galvanometer and hence the galvanometer deflection becomes zero which is the balancing condition of wheatstone network so after applying kcl as well as kvl you will apply uh, you will obtain the balancing condition that is p by q is equal to r by s yes. this is about wheatstone network next first application of wheatstone network that is meter bridge meter bridge is an apparatus which is used to find the value of unknown resistance as well as what resistivity of the material of the wire it is an apparatus used to find the unknown resistance as well as the resistivity of the material of the wire so in construction part it consists of a wooden board so in between the two points a and c a wire of length 100 cm is connected in between the two points a and c a wire of length 100 m is connected and in between these two metal strips in between the two thick l shaped metal strips and another metal strip is connected so across the left gap 
a standard resistance or a variable resistance is connected across the left gap a known resistance or a variable resistance is connected and across the right gap here across the right gap unknown resistance whose value has to be formed or unknown uh, a wire whose resistivity has to be found that is connected across the right gap so in between these two points b and d a galvanometer is connected to the point d a galvanometer is connected and another end of the galvanometer is usually connected to the sliding contactor jockey so as the galvanometer as the sliding contact or jockey moves from end a to end c at one particular point at this particular point the galvanometer deflection becomes zero so that is the balancing condition so here there are totally four resistors which are those so one is a variable resistance a variable resistor r and another is another one is unknown resistance s yes. the resistance corresponds to the length of the wire l is taken as p while the resistance corresponds to the remaining length that is 100 minus l is taken as q the resistance corresponds to the length of the wire l is taken as p the remaining length 100 minus l the resistance corresponds to the remaining length 100 minus l is taken as q so now there are totally four resistors p by q r as well as s now the balancing condition here p by q is equal to r by s so here the resistance p is nothing but length of the wire that is l and the resistance q is nothing but the length of the wire that is 100 minus l that is, is equal to r by s so here s is the unknown resistance that that can be found that is s is equal to r into 100 minus l divided by l so this is the formula to calculate the unknown resistance once if you calculate the resistance you can usually calculate the resistivity also you know the formula you know the relation between the resistance and the resistivity that is r is equal to rho l by a so if you know the value of l as well as the area of cross section a of this particular wire and after finding this unknown resistance you can calculate the resistivity of the given wire so this is about the meter bridge meter bridge is an apparatus used to find uh, unknown resistance as well as what the resistivity of the material of the wire it works by using the principle of wheatstone network so it consists of what two thick l shaped metallic strips in between these two thick l shaped metallic strip there is an another metal strip so between the two points a and c a wire of length 100 centimeter is attached and between the point to the point b a galvanometer is connected and to the another end of the galvanometer usually a sliding contact or jockey is connected so here this is the balance balancing condition p by q is equal to r by s where p is nothing but l where q is nothing but 100 minus l by using the expression so you can find out the you can you will get the expression for what uh, formula to find out the unknown resistance that is s is equal to r into 100 minus l divided by l where r is the known resistance where l is the balancing length it is about the meter bridge okay students next concept potentiometer potentiometer is a device which is used to find or which is used to measure exact potential difference between the two points it is a device used to find the unknown emf or exact measurement of what potential difference between the two points so here the, in the, this circuit there is a battery uh, which is connected uh, along with the battery an ammeter is connected as well as what a rheostat is connected so here there is a wire of length L is connected between the two points A and B. So using this circuit it is possible to measure the potential difference between the two points here A and C. It's right. So the voltage drop across this part of the wire that is AC that is given by V is equal to I into rho L divided by A where the potential drop across this entire uh, wire that is EP is equal to I into rho into capital L divided by A. So, potential, how this potentiometer actually works, the voltage drop across any portion of the wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire. The voltage drop across any portion of the wire is directly proportional to the length of the portion of that wire when steady current flows through it. That is the working principle of what? Potentiometer. The working principle of potentiometer is nothing but the voltage drop across any portion of the wire is directly proportional to the length of the portion of that wire when steady current flows through it. Okay. So, this is the voltage drop across the portion AC where EP represents the voltage drop across the entire uh, wire AB. So, at balance point what will happen so v becomes equal to ep that is v by l is equal to ep by capital l 
so where it can be written as v is equal to ep by l into l so ep by l is a constant for a given potentiometer that is v is equal to x into l or v is directly proportional to l that is nothing but the voltage drop across or uh, voltage drop across any portion of the wire is directly proportional to the length of the portion of the wire where x is equal to ep by l is nothing but potential gradient what do you mean by potential gradient change in potential with respect to distance that is called as potential gradient change in potential with respect to distance for example in this circuit so the current in the circuit is given by i is equal to ep where ep is nothing but the emf of this cell divided by small r internal resistance plus rh resistance of this rheostat plus re external resistance plus capital r where capital r represents the resistance of this wire this is the amount of current flowing through uh, this network uh, circuit primary circuit so now the potential gradient is given by x is equal to change in potential with respect to distance that is nothing but v by l v can be written as i into r where substitute the expression for i here then you will get this expression that is x is equal to v by l change in potential with respect to distance is called as potential gradient what are the uses of potentiometer so by using this potentiometer uh, as i said earlier it is possible to find out the unknown emf as well as it is also possible to compare the ratio of emf of the two cells as well as it is also possible to find out the internal resistance of a cell by using the formula small r is equal to capital r into l1 minus l2 by l2 so it is possible to find out the internal resistance of a given cell and also potentiometer can also be used to calibrate voltmeter as well as for ammeter also and also it is used for the measurement of thermo emf so this is about the potentiometer it is a device used to find out the exact potential difference between the two points are unknown emf so it works on the principle of what potential gradient okay next uh, uh, other uses of what potentiometer okay thank you this completes the synopsis of current electricity chapter from here onwards we are going to discuss very important mcqs which are asked in previous years neat as well as je and also applied mcq questions thank you friends okay students problem number 123 in your coaching material in a wheatstone bridge the three resistances p q and r are connected in three arms and the fourth arm is formed by two resistors in parallel so what is the condition for bridge to be balanced question number 123 so here formed by two resistances s1 and s2 in parallel so what is will be the new balancing condition so wheatstone network consists of how many resistors four resistors and they are connected in the form of what they are connected in the form of quadrilateral is it right p q as well as what r and here instead of one resistor yes here two resistors are connected s1 and s2 they are in which combination parallel combination s1 and s2 so in between these two points uh, there is a galvanometer okay between the two points b and d the, a galvanometer is connected and between the two points a and c a battery of emf e volt is connected along with a key or a switch now when the switch uh, key is closed here then what will happen current starts to flow so what is the balancing condition of a wheatstone network that is p by q is equal to r by s but here two resistors s1 and s2 are connected in parallel when two resistors are connected in parallel what is the formula for equivalent resistance r equivalent is equal to r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so okay now the according to the balancing condition of wheatstone network you can write p by q is equal to r by s so here that can be written as p by q is equal to r divided by instead of writing s here two resistors are in parallel that is nothing but s1 s2 divided by s1 plus s2 where s1 plus s2 goes to the numerator therefore the new balancing condition is p by q is equal to r into s1 plus s2 divided by s1 s2 problem number 123 which is the balancing condition p by q is equal to r into s1 plus s2 divided by s1 s2 and hence option b is the right answer so you already found the balancing condition of the wheatstone network, network that is p by q is equal to r by s but here instead of one resistor s there are two resistors s1 and s2 and they are connected in which combination parallel combination is it clear okay i'll move to the next problem 
problem number 124 read the problem the current in the primary circuit of a potentiometer is 0.2 ampere the specific resistance and cross section of the potentiometer wire are 4 into 10 power minus 7 ohm meter and 8 into 10 power minus 7 meter square respectively so what is the potential gradient you are asked to calculate the potential gradient first write the given values here the current flowing through the potentiometer wire is 0 0.2 ampere so its specific resistance or the resistivity rho is 4 into 10 power minus 7 ohm meter area of cross section of the wire is 8 into 10 power minus 7 meter square these are the given values so you are asked to calculate the potential gradient that is x is equal to v by l change in potential with respect to distance is it right so now here v can be written as what i into r divided by l where i by l into r can be written as rho l by a is it right the relation between the resistance and the resistivity ll gets cancelled then potential gradient x is equal to i into rho divided by a that is x is equal to i value how much 0 0.2 ampere multiplied by rho 4 into 10 power minus 7 ohm meter divided by area of cross section 8 into 10 power minus 7 substitute all the values 10 power minus 7 10 power minus 7 gets cancelled 4 to 0 0.2 divided by 2 that is equal to 0 0.1 volt per meter 0 0.1 volt per meter is the answer and hence option C is the right answer. Is it clear? You are asked to calculate the potential gradient which is nothing but change in potential with respect to distance. Then by using Ohm's law as well as the expression for relation between the resistance and the resistivity. I have written this one. LL gets cancelled. Then here substitute the values. Simple calculation. Then you will get 0.1 volt per meter is the answer and hence option C is the right answer. So next problem number 128 that is in a meter bridge the balancing length from the left end of the Wheatstone uh, resistance of 1 ohm in the right gap is found to be 20 centimeter. Calculate the value of unknown resistance. So it, this problem is based on uh, Wheatstone network here. So we know that in Wheatstone network uh, uh, there are totally 4 resistors here. So across the left gap one resistor is there and across this right gap there is in one more resistor okay so here the balancing length is given across the right gap known resistor is connected that is how much one ohm okay balancing length is also given you are asked to calculate the value of unknown resistance which is connected in the left gap okay so this is the unknown resistance This is the galvanometer and this one is jockey. So here PQ and this length is given how much 20 centimeter balancing length. So then the remaining length that is 100 minus L that is equal to how much 80 centimeter. Okay. So now according to the balancing condition of Wheatstone network you can write P by Q is equal to X by I will take this resistance as R. P by Q is equal to X by R. Is it right? P by Q is equal to X by R. Here P value is given that is 20 balancing length. The resistance corresponds to this length that is uh, uh, P which is directly proportional to the length that is 20. Q is how much? 80 that is, is equal to uh, X divided by value of this uh, uh, resistor which is connected to the right gap that is given 1 ohm. So now X is equal to how much? 20 by 80 that is nothing but 1 by 4 that is equal to how much 0 0.25 ohm the unknown resistance value is how much 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.25 ohm so usually the unknown resistance is connected to the right gap here then uh, you will get balancing condition is equal to how much p by q is equal to r by s here here also is the same thing the unknown resistance is uh, connected to the left gap that's it okay i'll move to the next problem Problem number 129, your coaching material. In a 
In the circuit, the galvanometer G shows the zero deflection. If the batteries A and B have negligible internal resistance, the value of the resistance R will be. So, a circuit diagram is given here. Okay, circuit diagram is given. So, which consists of two batteries, which consists of two batteries and a galvanometer. Okay. This resistance value is given how much? 500 ohm. Okay, 500 ohm. This is R, and this one is 12 volt. Okay, this one is 2 volt. This point is given as A and this one is given as what? B. You are asked to calculate the value of R here. In the circuit, the galvanometer G shows zero deflection. That is the important thing. The galvanometer shows zero deflection. If the batteries A and B, the two batteries have negligible internal resistance, find out the value of R. How can you find out the value of R? By using what? By using KVL. So, I will take this point as C, B, C, D, B, A, B, C, D, B, A and this one is I will take this one as E. Okay. So, first I will apply the KVL for the entire loop B, C, D, B, B, C, D. I will take this name as E, A and this one as F. Okay. B, C, D, E as well as A as well as F and B. Okay, apply the KVL here. You are moving from B to C. Here, negative electrode to the positive electrode. Negative electrode to the positive electrode. Lower to higher towards the increasing potential. EMF of the cell is second as positive. So, let I be the current because of this battery. Okay. Here the resistance is 500 ohm, then the IR product, the direction of traverse and the direction of current are one and the same. Therefore, I, IR product, I will take minus 500 I. Okay. Next here, E to A, battery positive to negative, battery positive to negative, higher to lower, towards the decreasing potential, minus 2. That is, is equal to 0. Is it, is it clear? I am moving from B to C, negative electrode to positive electrode, EMF of the cell is second as positive by sign convention. If the direction of the traverse and the direction of the current are one and the same, IR product is taken as negative. C to D, you are moving from C to D, direction of current is also from C to D, therefore IR product minus 500 into I. And then from here E to A, E to A, towards the battery positive to battery negative, higher to lower. And hence I have taken AMF of the cell as negative, minus 2. Therefore, it can be written as 12 minus 2. 10 is equal to 500 I, which means I is equal to 10 by 500, which is nothing but 1 by 50 ampere. This is the value of main current. So, now here the galvanometer shows zero deflection. Galvanometer shows zero deflection which means no current flows through this galvanometer. That means no current flows through this galvanometer and hence there is a battery of uh, EMF 2 volt which is connected in parallel with this galvanometer, uh, this resistor, is this right? Here this battery A is connected in parallel with this resistor, is it right? So that means no current flows through this galvanometer means no current flows through this galvanometer means the potential at this point is same as that of the potential at this point. Is it right? So that means voltage drop across the resistor, voltage across resistor R is given by V is equal to I into R. V is equal to I into R. Is it right? V is equal to I into R. And hence I can write or otherwise 
better apply the KVL for this loop only. Better apply the KVL for this loop only. That is applying KVL for the loop B, C, D, F, B. Now here from negative electrode to the positive electrode that is 12. Now here the current is minus 500 I here. Okay, IR product. Since no current flows through this galvanometer, which means the current I flows through this resistor that is minus IR is equal to 0 or that is 12 is equal to 12 is equal to I will take these two terms to RHS then it becomes 500 I plus IR is it right or 12 is equal to 12 is equal to I will take I common here 500 plus R which means I is equal to 12 divided by 500 plus R is it right ok now I will take this equation as 2. So I is equal to 1 by 50 ampere as 1 and here I is equal to 12 by 500 R. Is it clear? Now equating the equations 1 and 2. That is from 1 and 2 I can write 1 by 50 is equal to 12 divided by 500 R. Okay. Cross multiply then you will get 500 plus R is equal to 600 which means R is equal to how much 100 ohm this is the value of R which is nothing but 100 ohm and hence option A is the right answer see the solution once again so here first I will apply the KVL for this entire loop B C D E A F as well as B so Applying KVL, you will write 12 minus 500 I minus 2 is equal to 0. Then you will get I is equal to 1 by 50 ampere. Take this as equation 1. Now, I am applying the KVL for this loop only. Since in the problem itself they are given, galvanometer shows zero deflection, which means no current flows through this galvanometer. No current flows through this galvanometer. And this battery is connected in parallel with this uh, resistor. Okay. Now, applying KVL for the loop B C D F B then you will get 12 minus 500 I minus I R the same current I flows through this resistor also. So after applying KVL you will get the equation I is equal to 12 divided by 500 plus R take this equation as 2 equate the equations 1 and 2 then you will get the value of R as 100 ohm and hence option A is the right answer is it clear ok I will move to the next question. Problem number 130. Problem number 130. Read the problem. Read the problem. 130 in your coaching material. In the circuit shown, the cells A and B have the negligible internal resistance resistances for V A is equal to 12 volt, R1 is equal to 500 ohm, R is equal to 100 ohm, the galvanometer shows zero deflection. Calculate the value of VB. Observe the circuit diagram there. So here also there is a resistor R1, R and a galvanometer along with two cells of negligible internal resistances that means the internal resistance will be taken as 0 R1 R as well as this one is VA and this one is VB ok So you are asked to find out the value of VB that is the EMF of this battery VB. VA value is given how much 12 volt. R1 value is given 500 ohm. R value is given how much 100 ohm. Find out the value of VB there. So here also in the problem they are given galvanometer shows zero deflection 
which means the no current flows through this galvanometer. That one is the very important thing. So they are given the galvanometer shows zero deflection means no current flows through this uh, galvanometer. So first apply the KVL. Applying KVL for the entire loop A B C D E F A. A B C D E F A. Apply the KVL. You are moving from A to B. Battery negative to positive. Battery negative to positive. Lower to higher. That means EMF of the cell is taken as positive. Next. Here. Current because of this battery is taken as I. Okay. Now here. Minus 500 I. Minus 500 I. A, B, C, F, A. Here the battery voltage is not given, right? Then no need to apply the KVL for the entire loop. Better apply the KVL for the loop A, B, C, F, A. A, B, C, F, A. Here. Okay. 12 minus 500 I. The same current I flows through this resistor also. Minus 100 I. Minus 100 I. Okay. That is, is equal to 0. That is 12 is equal to 600 I. Therefore, I is equal to here 12 divided by 600. Okay, that is nothing but uh, 12 divided by 600 means 1 by 50. That means 2 into 10 power minus 2 ampere. 2 into 10 power minus 2 ampere is the current flowing through the current flowing through this part of the network. So in the problem itself they are given no current flows through this galvanometer means no galvanometer shows zero deflection which means no current flow through this resistor and this cell is connected in parallel with the resistor. This cell is connected in parallel with this resistor. Okay. Now the potential difference between these two points are the voltage drop across this resistor. Voltage across R voltage across R that is nothing but VB since this cell is connected in parallel with R that is VB is equal to according to Ohm's law you can write I into R since the same current flows through this resistor R also VB can be written as I into R or VB is equal to I value is how much 2 into 10 power minus 2 resistance R value is given that is equal to how much 100 ohm. That, therefore, VB is equal to how much? 10 power minus 2, 10 power plus 2 gets cancelled. VB is equal to how much? 2 volt. And hence, option which one? Option B is the right answer. So, first I applied the KVL for this part of the network. I found the value of I here. Why I applied KVL only to this part of the network means in the problem itself they are given galvanometer shows zero deflection, which means no current flows through this uh, this part of the network or this galvanometer okay because of this band next since this cell is connected in parallel with this resistor r voltage across these two points is nothing but the emf of this cell is it right and hence according to use uh, according to ohm's law i can write vb is equal to i into r and hence you will get 2 volt which is nothing but the emf of this cell and hence option b is the right answer. Thank you, sir.